welcome to Fact or Freestyle. People love Dave Dory, and they always answer the phone when he calls. When we get him on Zoom, we ask him to confirm rumors. Let's see how far down the rabbit hole we go. How's this? Dang it. Um, <laughs> you fucking with me? Yeah. All right. How's it going, Joe? I think it's going all right. Um, say something again. I did a show today. I actually did tricks on my BMX in front of people. All right. So how did it go? Uh, good. I think I still have a few few tricks left in me it's not my it's not my final final show of course well i'm glad that you uh came to that conclusion <laughs> yeah it was fun it was a lot of people it was a really awesome day and the ground was unbelievably challenging it was a one-way so when there's a one-way street and you got multiple cars going there's like four ribs, you know, you can kind of deal with like one big, this is the main right. road and literally four. So it was fine. I just had to do what I could pull it off. That's why I don't ride outside. Yeah. And some of it was, huh? I was just gonna say parades are also challenging because I just want to like go, 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 go. And like, you have to pace yourself. It wasn't a super long parade mm. and it wasn't really hot, which was great, but I was pretty, pretty tired. Like I could go have a nap right, right about now, but I'm not because I got Joe Sickman on the phone. I thought, can't have a nap when Joe Sickman is there. Dude. So that on LinkedIn, I see, I get tagged in something and I'm and, and it's a video and I'm like, uh, I mean, I know, like I work for the, I know the company that I'm doing this for and I know like their marketing director, but I had yeah. not met this particular woman doing, doing the recording. And I was like, I'm just going to wait for it. Bang, Sickman. All right, good. So I sent it over to you. So then <laughs> an hour later, we've got like all the analysts are, um, we do like lunch and learn thing. And I had this question and I put it in the chat and the one guy's like, oh, here's a good one from Joe Sickman. I was like, fuck. <laughs> Two in as many hours. I think you should buy sickman.com instead of .com. So I was thinking, you know, those like SIC that you put in brackets when a um, yeah. news I, I was thinking like how could i incorporate that but uh, i think it's your i think it's your whole marketing brand that you you're gonna develop i like i it might say i deserve this well yeah the irony is is there and just embrace it i'm gonna i i actually have no choice i was thinking um about the whole like when I grabbed this uh hoodie I was like yeah Baco represent or De Groot or Deco represent and I was like and then the whole Lee Musselwhite thing came to came back and it was like Wait, I don't know enough about the Lee. I don't know about the Lee I mean I, I kind of probably saw some of it but fill me in a little okay. bit so I met Lee Mus Muscle White, the day I met you. Yeah. And in Florida, in Florida at Chad, at probably Chad's shop. Yes. And I walk in and he said, I said, hi, I'm Joe. And he's like, I said, uh, Sisman. And you go, well, he goes, like cinnamon. And James goes, yes, like cinnamon. And you go, oh. Yeah, cinnamon. That's great. <laughs> and done. I remember that. Yeah. And he so and then, so the cinnamon. So he was riding the cinnamon. 
Right. Okay. That's right. I remember the cinnamon. I like Sigmund much better. It just it's much more suitable. Well, it's. I don't know how you feel about, about the tongue. I went and, years without a nickname. And and that's also the funny thing is that that's the same time when I was yelling at you. Are you listening to me? That was so funny. Oh, I'd be great if we had that clip on there. <laughs> I, okay. I'll add it. I'll add it. Uh, speaking of, I'm going to send you a video with the step-by-step, -step, the first basic foundation oh. for Yogi Go Round, because the time has come. It's not that far around the corner before you're going to have to be able to yeah, execute that's that true. Trip. That's true. And it is That's the yoga round. So, and you do swivel, you can do swivels and drop it to the peg, I imagine. I never have. Well, I've done swip. Yeah, like I've done swivel. I've never dropped it to the peg because okay. I would do swivel when I would need to get out of something when I had breaks. But then since breaks. I, yeah, but then since I took my breaks off, I haven't had to i haven't okay been able to s fix my s situation with a swivel i'm not an anti-swivite i'm just saying that i've never been pushed into a corner where the swivel was the way out well this is next level swiveling i mean this is not just your every elementary swivel on the peg so 20, I think 2021 is when I leave my comfort zone. I'm being known as yeah. sick men. Sick I'm writing my the board. Right. No, not just sick men. It's, it's it's sick men in in your professional environment. And tell me again what that video was. Like she was speaking Greek. She's like, oh, so the blah, 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 blah. Which what one? The, the video that you sent me where the woman said, and Joe Sickman, and it was that what was the type of um she was speaking Greek. So, well, it, I, it's, it's so funny. Yeah. So um, I don't know that I ever told you what I do for a living. So I work for a research and advisory firm that uh, helps companies use technology to grow their business faster. And there is a class of software that you use to manage all of the digital elements of of your customer experience. And there's a ton of components and stuff that you have to plug in. Mm -hmm. And I am doing a, uh, I am doing a webinar with a company that sells one of those components. And I'm going to talk about uh, digital maturity and how you have to get to a certain you have to have certain practices and certain mindsets and you have to operate your business in a certain way in order to take advantage of all of these technologies. But when you do, it's like super dopeness. And so mm -hmm. that's what, and basically that's what I, people pay me or pay my company um, to have me do 20 minutes, bunch of slides. Mm. Sometimes they make jokes. Sometimes you do Q and A. And have you, I'm wondering if you're gonna fall into the like footsteps of Matt. You've heard about Matt Wilhelm and his whole project, right? It's like next level stuff. He's gonna have this, I mean, he's always done really well with the, the shows and marketing his, his talent. And he talked about that. And then when COVID hit, now he's got this whole, you know, like virtual thing. And the funny thing is that they still have him jump through these these like requirements, even though he's not even even there. But I heard some rumblings, and maybe you heard this, maybe not, that he's going to do. Maybe it's a little top secret at this point, but he's going to release this like entity that's going to be Matt Hillman for for like generations and generations and generations. Like as as long as the internet exists, someone's going to be able to book and schedule and have a Matt Wilhelm show. And he's gonna record, I don't know, like thousands of vi videos or shows and then put them in this massive database and it's gonna be completely automated and even maybe get paid by Bitcoin or something. I, I don't know, I, there's just different things that I've heard. What, what did you, 
is anything like that going to happen with your career? Are you considering that? Or well, about Matt Wilhelm, yeah, it, it's Project Lawnmower Man that Stephen Lawnmower. King. Remember, oh. it had. I want to say it had the movie had Pierce Brosnan, and it was about virtual reality. It came out around like ninety one, ninety two, ninety three. And it was kind of like that, um, the play or book called Flowers for Algernon where this very simple minded, nice guy uh, befriends a scientist who enhances his intelligence and he becomes like wonderful, but it gets its name because the kid like mowed the scientist's lawn. Okay. And he uh, learns in a virtual reality uh, environment and he's on, you know, they juice him or whatever and he gets smart and strong. And then the climax is when he invariably gets out of control, he becomes fully digital and basically the last scene of the movie is him ringing all of the phones in the world. So he, he becomes the machine or be, uh, he becomes the, the, the digitized intelligence. I have to watch that. Um, I, yeah, I don't think I've seen that, but it sounds familiar. And but so I, Matt was like rolling lawnmower man or lawnmower man. And so it was perfect because of the trick, the lawnmower. Um, right. Right. And, and I think it's gonna, it's a great possibility that he can be the everlasting show. So, you know, uh, Bill Nitschke, people that come to mind with doing so many shows in their career, right. Bill Nitschke, Dave Volker, Robert Castile, like all of those, Matt Wilhelm are all, uh, Keith King probably is up there. I don't, I don't really know. Keith if he's is there. probably up there. Yeah, he's, uh, and Pete, like, cause Keith was doing, um, NFL and NBA, he's got a lot of profession, right. even college ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just think, you know, maybe he's going to trump all of that with this infinity producing <laughs> freestyle shows. He's going to be the final infinity stone. The final infinity <laughs> stone. <laughs> um, okay, so today, what do we have for today? We're going to do a little editing today is a big day it is a big day for you i know you're pretty excited <laughs> today is today is a really big day and i'm gonna let's just go ahead and get this going i will share my application so what what episode are we on now i mean i know we're doing rl what number 20 20 this is 20 rl 20 as it's in RL, rl 20 does he know that RL20 is, I mean, because that's pretty so, ironic. How do we Dylan, that? Dylan, the, the same way that you and I have been putting a dent in the universe, uh, it is very clear that we both practice chaos magic. And chaos this is magic. precisely what has, what's gone down. It's I like that phrase, chaos, that we should use that for sure. Come yes. join Factor Freestyle. The chaos. chaos magic. Chaos magic. You, cool. Okay, R of 20. That couldn't have been, we couldn't have written that. That's amazing. And this edition can be RL22. <laughs> I was, I had this idea, Joey. I just want to bounce it off you. And you can shoot any of my ideas down. Like, don't feel like every idea I have is, oh, that's a great one. You got to be honest with me. But what if, we brought in some people and this, I think this is kind of fun to do. I think we can post it and just people that really want to listen to just us kind of in that creative mode, rambling and just talking about ideas and stuff. But what if we also brought in other people and kind of just said, look, we, we've tapped into something bigger than we ever imagined. And we kind of need some help. Like people that I feel have great uh, creative insight, thought process, um, Sean White is one that comes to mind. I just, I, I like having him. Obviously, Large Ray, um, 
Gary Lorenz. I mean, there's so many, it's hard to, to just to narrow down just a short list, but what about that? Having people like right now, I could just message someone and say, Hey, we're, we're happening editing this, this actually. So this could be funny if you, uh, actually, why don't you try this now? Yeah. Um, why don't I just call someone and say, either call someone or go on to Facebook and just post right now. We are editing the RL 20 episode. Uh, DM me right. if you I, want in. We, we want to filter it, so I'll DM. And then if, if anyone has some insights in, in insights or feedback or, or, okay, let's try that. Meanwhile, right. you can get this ready. I like it already, RL 20. And is that how it was on the frame? 20, and it was 0.2, was it? It was actually two. two. It took me a while to figure out, but yeah, the RL20 was the frame and then right. this was the second version of it. Yeah, I just remember RL20, but he wrote the, the, the two, 22, okay. Um, okay, let me just post that. Um, I'm gonna do Instagram and Facebook because it seems like that's a good move. Is the sound coming through for you? Um, I don't hear anything, well, play something. No. The sound has to come through for you. Um, but you, you had it before, but last time we did it. You, I sure did. And let me figure out. Okay. Oh, did you already, you, you, put, you put Pete and Sean White's up? Yeah, it came out already. Hey, we have 22 subscribers now. We're, Dude, we're dude, rocking it. We're, we are lit AF. We're, oh, and you got the big pegs in there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. I'm getting inside. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to flip and use different speakers. And now tell me if you hear it. Nope. Nope. Oh. oh. All right. Trying something else. Um, Okay, so I think that what I need to do is. I got to find a photo to post. Oh, I almost, I almost, it sounded like it. Play another, play another bit. Maybe it's just that clip. No, it has to do with the, um, with how I configure the audio settings in Zoom. And so now, oh. now, now let's try it. Got it. Okay, so you will also hear my keystrokes and I'll be, um, I will use them sparingly. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so I was, when uh, Pete and Sean gave the thumbs up, I just immediately made it public and then went out to ride. Um, what, what picture should I use for this post? Can you take a picture of us right now in what you see on your screen? Oh, good idea. And so it's basically. This is lot, this is happening now. So Ron Wilkerson is the one who started all of mouth posing. It's right. Yeah, he was the he was the agency that he he is absolutely. I have such whiplash envy. Um, I cannot wait until I get it. I'm on. Scott Hagnus format. My legs are constantly, I guess I'm just working very hard. And for, for whatever reason, it feels like it's more, I am working harder. It feels harder than anything has felt. Like I, when I was doing Master of Creativity, yes, I was learning how to deal with mental anguish. Yeah. I had, 
I was, I was getting rewards because of how I was inventing tricks and I was in a pretty good groove. I had intentionally lost like 15 pounds to take uh, weight off my knees for the jump. Uh, my girlfriend protested so much. I'm like, look, I am not a manorexic. I need, I, I, I need this trick to be as least impactful as it possibly can in its massive impact. Yeah. But now when I go out and I ride like doing my right leg stuff, it, it hurts. It feels like I have just squatted like not all the way down squatted, but just like deep knee bend Yeah. for several minutes. And you know, it's like, it's not that ouch pain, it's that like exertion pain. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, I'm feeling it too, because I'm doing the same program and I'm a little probably behind you. I, I had to back off on it because my legs, it was my legs. It wasn't my upper body, it was all my legs. The squatting and the, the cycling squats and the one, where you go down all the way down to one knee. Oh man, it was, I, I overdid it the first, the first week and I was like hurting. So yep. I know exactly what you mean. Yep. And I don't have a Smith machine or a <clears throat> chin up bar. And I had a chin up bar that I was able to use in my old, uh, in my former apartment, which was built, you know, in, I think that apartment complex is probably built around 2015 or 14. This, but this house, nothing is standard and I'm terrified of uh, overdoing something. And so, so I haven't been doing like the, the chin up stuff, but dude, everything else, it's like, oh yeah, Scott Hagnes format helps with flexibility. I got the flexibility down it's the well we'll see when you do the yogi go round that yeah. will be yeah. and actually I, that reminds me i need to reach out to scott and say sickman needs an especial program <laughs> to support that so are you ready make it so are you ready to get moving with this uh yeah hold on i just was about to finish this um okay uh, sure. DM, me, dm if you want to join i'm gonna say this this creative process yeah, they the, tell them tell them that we're editing the RL episode. Or have something to say or have some input. Okay. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. Well, here we go. Uh oh. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. <laughs> You're all nervous. <laughs> like, are you wearing the same hoodie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so, so, speaking of those longer episodes, yeah. The Matt Hoffman and Vic Murphy are in four, nearly 15 minute. So the people who have been dying for longer ones are gonna get it. Yeah, I'm just saying too, like it wouldn't be, the way that we're doing it now, there's not really, just, I felt like Matt was pretty long, Matt Wilhelm was pretty long, but boy, was there some nice flow and showing, you know, just coming up with things and throwing out there and, and like, cause we can do our, our bit of chopping in, but there's also something to be said about just here, you know, here it is, like there's just the whole show. You know, that. So to that end, um, I did almost all of the Matt and Vic show last night. Oh. And so I want to say that it took me two or three hours and I used a different method. Along the way, I chopped and I was like, oh, we, like this was backstage talk or like whatever. I, I had a different set of criteria for, for chopping stuff out. Yeah. Um, but in the end, you know, and then I went back and was like, all right, well, let me stop it. Like break it at a 15 minute mark. It worked out miraculously. I, Dave, I think so much of it was just my headspace and editing because I didn't take the uh out. Um, and what was what was I was really vibing on was when Matt got into a group and with you guys on there. Yeah. He was stoked to be hanging out with his friends. I've never seen a Matt Hoffman interview like that. 
Exactly. That's what I that's what I want to get. And, and I haven't listened to him recently. I mean, I remember, but you know how you go back and you totally forget so many things that happened. Yes. So I haven't had a chance to listen to him. But um, I just wanted to put that out there to, to, to offer that as a, almost as a sense of a little bit of liberation for you too. It's like, okay, you, you pull out 15 minutes, we post that, and then we post a long form, and maybe do a little bit of like cutting out. Yeah, just start talking like that, Joe. I think I think I would like for you to always talk really fast. I think I'm going to just try to get everything across as fast as I can so I can just get, get to the point right away. You know, it would be really cool is if we just like always talk really fast and then when I can edit it, it would be like four times faster. Right, exactly. I guess it was, I guess it, I guess maybe the next time that somebody comes on, we just talk really fast like those. And then yeah, talk really fast, continue. make sure you get the point across really fast. You know, and you sorry, well, this is what happened. I went down to Murrow Beach. It's kind of hard to tell a story really fast though, for me. I don't know, really, is it? I think so. I have to know the story really well. Look, this is what I think. I think that it, all we have to do is get in a little, little bit of a groove, and then eventually we're going to hear it, and we'll learn how to talk really fast, because it's not like the Micro Machines guy, but like eventually it's just going to go really normal, and with you doing it and I doing it. Okay, repeat after me. Betty butter, 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 what's bitter? She put in the batter, batter, bitter, bitter. So Betty butter, butter, bitter, butter, butter, put in the batter, batter, ginger, bitter, as word before. Who's this Betty brought out about? Betty butter, butter, some butter. What's her last butter, name? Butter, what's the bitter? What's her last name? Betty Butter. Oh no, Betty. Betty Butter bought some butter. Betty Butter bought some butter. But the butter was so bitter. I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't. I don't, I don't think this is a real last name. And if it is a last name, what's she buying butter for? She should have it already in her house. <laughs> okay. Um, probably made up before Amazon. Not that everyone will listen to it. Who cares? cares if everyone was to do it but like you said with you know now that we're, we're really getting the flow right on and coming up with good talking initial talking points and then we have that i love when we in the meta stuff when we pat ourselves on the back it's it feels very very good yeah right <laughs> we have to freestyle and then we kind of end it with you know whatever we like that thing that i came up with 10 you know what did you do 10 minutes ago i love that by the way i really liked the 10 minutes ago thing because on this one i was like i was apologizing the day for fucking up the whole schedule 10 months ago and we do 10 minutes oh, ago, right. we have these different points that we can do and um i always was thinking okay well people are busy they don't want the whole time but when i was driving over to see my friend oh you know when i had to actually speed up the, the robert riley one to like trim down two minutes and some dude was like did you speed this up this is almost unlistenable fuck you i hate you and i was like come on bro it's super funny because like there's always it's always that what like the one little comment that you're like really is that representative but dudes really like to do it well because you speed it up just to make it fit within the 15 there was so much good stuff in the Robert Riley one. I did not want to. So there wasn't enough for two episodes, but there was a little bit more. Couldn't cut it all out. I couldn't cut it all out, and so but you gotta know that that if someone is complaining, that's a, that's a really nice compliment because that means that they're 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 wanting the content. Yep, and but and I it, it is I do like to periodically troll people um, because then they're like bent and they're like i'm gonna go is he ever gonna get his act together and he comes back and it's fine just one little fly in the ointment every so often oh, i actually have to hang out with Juan Carlos, he's right from chile and then brian um look you have that bionic arm on oh yeah right how is it how is it right now my arm was like great like i wrote today i mean i didn't really write that hard because it was just a parade but um it didn't act up at all but again scott hagness and the and the stretch is amazing yeah you know yellow from Yellow designs in Colorado. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so he was he was there and uh I was just like the whole time driving, I was like, oh, this would have been perfect to, to listen to a whole long segment. Just, you know, there is there is a need for that. You know what you can do? We have the factor freestyle playlist. And if you go there and you tap on any item in the playlist, it'll start playing back to back from there. Especially since uh, oh, there's a on on our channel. Yes. Okay, good, because that was the thing that I thought about. I liked what you did with the episode that said, we have a limited time of 15 minutes. Okay, wait, I know you, you're checking your phone now. I'll wait, I'll have, that was great. And I think it'd be cool if you could do a little different version so it doesn't get, so it's kind of fresh, but something along that, like say that, that you have to click on the next link and, um, I don't, I don't know, whatever else you want to do. I like the, oh, I'm going to wait for you, but keep kind of mix it up a bit. Yeah, I have noticed that as well. I mean, like the 15 minute episodes are easy and consumable, but when I'm driving, like, it's, like we, it's very clear that we need 
at least two formats. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know the magic of what happens when we instill it. You know, we throw out an idea and then it builds. And you can only do so much in that segue and make it. You know, not you know, not missing some of the you know some of the juice because there's, there's just a lot. So, cool. I noticed that like the the we could we could so sell before this we, before we talk. We could sell this section to uh, corporate training on collaboration oh, because right. we don't say no let's do it this way we're like yes and we right. do that constantly right that's a good point we are wonderful yeah but it was as i edited it, i was like this guy listens to a conversation and then freestyles the conversation and i started listening that listening for that for everyone else and i was like wait a second these conversations are awesome because they're freestyling the conversation it's like, exactly. like, like improv and, and Matt also did, Wilhelm also did a really good job. And then, and then we, we had this format that it, like, it invites that, like uh, Hoffman, because Hoffman, I see many interviews with Hoffman, and it, like you said, it didn't offer that. You know, like they were trying to reach, it was just kind of by the book, it was a little bit more by the book, right? And I like it when there's a little bit more, like you couldn't, you know, you couldn't tell, like, was he, was he, was he real about the radiance or was it, because you know, he was saying, oh yeah, there's a, I remember it happened in my rent, and there's a radiance right there. Maybe we could also sell this as tutorials to YouTubers. To be better, <laughs> to like interview shows with twenty with twenty two subscribers. Yeah, we got a lot to take on. We got it. We got it. Hey, you know this is a, it's all about the niche. If you can be the best in that niche, you can a little niche. Okay. He said that his brother stuck his face in the hands, and I was like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> are this, we just are we way ahead for RL? Is that why we're yeah we're waiting for RL? Let me let, let me just get to the no, point. It's fine. Right? It's fine. It's just funny, like because. Uh, Usually we don't have that much of a pre-show. So there's a one of the things that I try to do in the edit is we we have banter up until the guy joins, and I try to grab something. Yeah. That's no, I think that's great. Yeah. So find great. out what. But we don't. We're not talking anything about RL. Well, I guess it can be whatever. But. All right. Let me zoom. Let Who me... else? You're talking about. It's four foot wide, twenty feet in the air, and he's hopping to get over the two inches. Because the thing fell. He's like, <laughs> no, some of the stories I've heard Joe that he talked about, and I wish I would remember. There's a few things that I would have remembered, like after the fact. First one I wanted to tell you was he did some big air in the X Games, and he's up there, and he's like in a hangup, so he throws his bike, and then he re realizes it's going to land on the deck. So somehow he maneuvers his body and pushes himself off of the camera um, stand thing. Like, how the heck does he think of that? The other thing that I wish I would have talked about when we had Carl on about the Nowhere BMX show, because he said, oh yeah, you did the yeah. show with, um, I keep the guy's name. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here. Oh, God, I wanted to tell that story. About Carl. Yeah. Yeah, Carl is wild. Yeah, and I like doing having guys too, just people that are really supporting the sport. Carl's done an amazing job. The Nebraska writers and the whole scene. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh it's RL Osborne. Got audio. How's it going, RL? Uh, it, looks, it looks like he's still connecting audio. Look at the sun coming at okay. the it's, it's, it's a good effect. Is it a, is it a cool thing? It's hey, what's up, guys? Good to hear you. Now we hear you. Testing one, two. Now I see that you are on mute. This is me totally like. Yeah, turn the volume up, maybe. How's that? Totally trying to soften him up. Now we're good. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? Hey, RL, man, nice to see you. You too. It's been a while. That's been a while. See, I just said nice to see you, Joe. Awesome. It's, it's good, just good to have you. Matt. Matt feels like. Yeah, it's, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm having a good time with it. That's good. See, in this speed, RL sounds like he's talking normal. RL <laughs> might be a slow talker. Is he a slow talker? Oh. R RL Osborne might be a slow talker. Maybe what we can do is anytime RL is talking, we will speed it up. And just to see if anybody notices. Notices. <laughs> Did you? Just. Just enough. Okay, we're playing it another bit. So wait, we have to hear him talking more at the speed. So uh, Joe, this is our our Dude. Uh, Joe. Th this this when we did this. <laughs> so uh, Joe, this is our our is Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry. This uh, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna mark these. Uh, Those face expressions that you got? Yeah, um, I slowed it down to really. This is RL. RL, this is Joe. Hey, Joe, what's up? Much respect, RL. I, I hope that as you see my footprints in the spam, I bust everyone's balls for jokes, and it's only to make everyone, including you, laugh. 
All right. So this is me. You're still nervous at this point. You don't know what he's going to say I right now. <laughs> People are getting the wrong impression. You know, like when someone comes out and they start laying into me, you know, I go find them. Not because I want to ruin their day, but I want to hear what they have to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even if it's crazy and, and they're from planet Mars, you know, I don't care. I just want to hear what they have. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. And so, uh, no, the whole joking around and all that stuff. I'm totally cool with it. I'm not gonna say I don't get pissed when people say stupid shit, but it, that's their right. That's their right to say it, and it's my right to comment on it, right? And I, oh, yeah. I know that honesty, being straight up, that's that's cool. So this that's is great. When, this is when I got my get out of jail free card. This is what when you got what? My get out of jail free card, like in yep. the t- like in that game. So that I'm you were on the edge until then. Because that would that would not make it fun. So oh no, attack me now. You know, at my age, I do got still. If you're your blood just flows or your adrenaline moves a little bit. It's like, oh, bring it on, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah, whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes, man. If it's some guy calling me names, well, that's fine. If my blood moves, I'm, I'm kind of happy. It's a good feeling, you know? Well, you know what? We are doing medical work here. Exactly. We, you know, we're creating good oxygen and blood flow here at Factor Free Show. We should have, we should get oxygen to sponsor the show. Yeah, for sure. So, so do you know what yeah. I've So Joe and I kind of have been doing this for a few months now, but are you, are you all familiar with Factor Freestyle? This is so good because he doesn't know where yeah, he he's is. he's totally lost. He thinks it's... RL thinks he's on Footprints in the Span. With what? Factor Freestyle, the show that you're on right now? Oh, no, I thought this was Footprints in the Span or something like that. Okay, so there, so, so there is a lot of very elaborate. Um, um, <laughs> so yes, yeah, so footprints in the spam is my my house of brands is insane. I know that's what's great about it. Like, it's because there's so many aspects. <clears throat> but it's good that he came in. It's almost it's perfect because he's like, wait, I thought it was fruits in, fruits in the spam, and that's like exactly where you want him to be in this sense. Like, okay, he's been up to he's been seen all that. Uh, is my Instagram. I also run Scuffington Post, which is written in the voice of someone who is angry at the new school aesthetic that is anti-scuffling. So he's fighting back against that. And then I have the Terradome Sports Science Research Center, which is where I ride. And then this is a show that David and I put together because we would call one another shortly after COVID. And we were like, you know what, man? We're not going to events and we're not hearing stories. And we would hear rumors, but there, would, but there was no one or like, at the after party, you'd be sitting around the dinner table, someone would tell one part of it and another guy would call them out. Yeah. But we were just hearing one side of it and there was no one checking it. And so we decided that we would go on a mission and that we would check these rumors. <laughs> the first one that we called, we called Pete Augustine. And like, that was the first show that we did. So I think all, that all of the punchline when, when all of us exploded into laughter was amazing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think it's all good, but you know, it's a lot of repeat, but it's fine because we're explaining it to RL. I don't know if there's a way to, to shorten your, your explanation of it, but if not, leave it. So here's what I've found. We can we can explain the show to the guest so that they understand. And then in the final edit, I can like I've been chopping some of that stuff out. Yeah. For the audience. So there's stuff that we have to always say to, to the guest. Yeah. That will that is will go that has to go on the cutting room floor. But I'm just saying, like you said, like we all reacted when, you know, when you basically just finalized like the whole idea behind it. Oh, I, you, so I can, I can. Maybe I can just have that, go go right. back a little bit and just see what, what that would be like. Yeah. So we decided to be. Yes, yeah, so something yeah. like that. On the dinner table, someone would tell one part of it and another guy would call them out. Yeah. But we were just hearing one side of it and there was no one checking it. And so we decided that we would go on a mission and that we would check these rumors. <laughs> and that's the first one that we called, we called yeah. Pete. And like, that was the first show that we did, RL. And Pete, like. So that's, I mean, that's great because that's just short enough. Just the, the, the dinner table and confirming, like, all that seems fine because it is a good lead in into everyone's reaction. So you know that Pete and I, I mean, we go way back. We were in high school together. And so in the end, when, so you and Pete were in high school together. I did not know that. Yeah, so we went to the same school, but we didn't hang out a whole lot. Like we rode together later, but in high school, he's he was a bit older than me. And you know, in in high school, like one year, two years difference. It's like senior versus a junior. You know, but we just didn't. Ha- he was um, probably hung out more with my brother Paul, which is one year older than I was. But then we started hanging out riding at the beach. But that's where I initially met him. I have a really crazy photo. I'll try to find it while looking right while you're doing this because there's some funny stuff 
Can you still hear? Yeah, I still can hear. Everyone. Okay. Totally different avenues that we went down, and he gave me crap about being Haro's little puppet, and like I love the guy to death now. Yeah, and I always did, but you know he would he would just call me out, and that's just how Pete is, right? So I thought, Joe, I've got the perfect guy, and you you know this about Augustine, he's just he will not hold back. And the, the show went great, and we're like, okay, I'm hooked. And Joe's like, I'm hooked. And we've been committed ever since, and we've just been signing like we had a uh, Vic Murphy and we had Matt Hoffman on, like great little combination because they hadn't seen each other for years, and uh, it's just a good mixture. We had Eddie Roman and Scotty Freeman trying to pick different people. Now you, we got we, we kind of got short notice on this. I guess there was a little confusion. We usually do this on Saturday, so. Well, I don't know if you want to leave any of that. Like, does that? What do you think about that content? I mean, I'm just going through the like, recap of some of the shows, but oh, um, it we, seems like we can do the yeah. I mean, if we have some stuff we want to just drop right now, we'll drop it. Okay, let's just drop that. It's all URL, so there's a lot weighing on you here for the show. No, just kidding. I'm not feeling it. Okay, I'm not feeling any uh, pressure, but um, I just you know Dylan sets us all up because I'm kind of computer stupid, and I don't really want to know how all that shit works, you know. So he, made, he sets us all up, makes everything work, puts the mic together. And so I don't, he just said, hey, they want to do it at 3 o'clock today. And I said, sure. Perfect. Okay. I got to ask Joe a question. Here it comes. <laughs> I got to ask Joe a question. Perfect. I got to ask Joe a question. Let's hear it. Okay. So you, you, you said that post about um, just, just to, I don't know how you said it, about people going, about the world thinking that people can are looking up to these people like they're special and they they can do anything they want but and they actually aren't any smarter than you oh you yeah know? so that yeah that was a steve jobs uh, that was a steve jobs was that a shot at me not a shot. No, no no not shot no, no, no. by the way yeah joe i think, I you think this was handled expertly right what because what 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 would a normal untrained person do they wouldn't correct the word shot. Oh yeah, so that yeah, that was a Steve Jobs. Uh, that was a Steve Jobs. Was that a shot at me? Not a shot. No, 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 not a shot. No, 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 no. This was an equivocation. So <clears throat> you. This is a, what that. did you say? This is a what? Equivocation. Equivocation. Which is when you take two things and you treat them as being equal. And right. so I took RL cutting his haro, and like to prototype something new, and said that is the same thing that Steve Jobs said about molding the world and the the humor is uh one would not expect steve jobs to be the, doing the same thing that rl is doing however when you break it down their mission is exact rl was like all bikes are wrong and i'm gonna fix it and I'm okay, it. so I want to see what RL's response is again. Oh. All right, here we go. Here we go. Not a shot. No, 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 not a shot. No, 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 no. This was an equivocation. So <clears throat> you took that horror and modified it. You right. took the world, you made it your own. Now that was, when, it, when as you were doing that, the Steve Jobs quote came to mind because that's what he said. Got it, got it. And he, whether it was or not, you know, I even posted after that. I said, I totally agree. But then yeah. I didn't say it. it's true. Yeah. Just, you know, a lot of me, well, I disagree. I'll just leave it like that. I agree with everything you said, but. I still wanted to know if you were coming after me or not, but no, no. Either I'll, way, tell, I'll, I'll tell you something else. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I'll, give, I'll tell you something else. So I do tricks. Uh, I do tricks where I pinch my ankles to hold the bike up. Really, really painful. I also do tricks where I use my uh, knees to pinch the handlebars so I can do no hand steamrollers. Yeah. Incredibly painful. Um, once I learned them, I, need, I needed to practice them a lot. And so I need to figure out a way to not have to crunch all the time. So put hockey tape around my bars. Well, Brian Upman and Doug decided that my bike looked like the mummy. So then to go even further, I, I, I needed a little bit of tack. And so I started putting um, shoe goo on it. So then that worked. So then I was like, well, what if I put shoe goo on the inside of my jeans? <laughs> so I, I have modified I love it. Okay. And so I just got to say, man, if, if you modify frame, I, I, I don't, I'm into it because I have modified and I get crap for modifying, but I just tell these puns. What, even yeah. though anybody can say anything, but you're trying to figure out a problem. Yeah, you're figuring out a problem that other people are probably having. I know I get bruises all over my body, and when you go ride the next day, it's, it's a bitch to keep tagging that bruise. I am going to send that thing to Dub and Brian Huffman. Just be like, you guys were hate. You guys are making fun of me for using hockey tape. Call my bike the Mummy. <laughs> so it's like, how can I get around it? And you're figuring it out. That's innovation. Innovation to me is as important as the writing. 
it's, you know, you ride and then you see these changes coming and people thinking and, and it causes arguments. It causes people talking about it. It just, it's the other half of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I just read a post on a guy that was commenting on me that said, he, he said, angles don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> he talk, I freestyle bike because I cut out my heart. He goes, angles don't matter. I know a guy that can ride any angle, any kind of bike and do anything he wants. So I'm thinking, well, that's one guy in the whole world. But I know who that dude is. And he does get, I think he's Greek or something. He's from Greece. He does, he he turns it, he, he goes to 11 sometimes. Uh, angles <laughs> are pretty, and Dave, you know this, on a freestyle bike, they're critical. You know what I mean? Have angles that you like at work. Um, but I, I just, I love that diversity. Uh, him saying that angles don't matter. There's a good point to that because it, it's true. You can, on most of these bikes, you can figure it out. You can figure out how to make that work. You might be really sore after trying it. You might crash a million times, but um, you can figure it out. So there's, there's some truth to what he's saying, but. You can figure it out. So there's, there's some truth to what he's saying, but the fact that angles don't matter is like, man, I don't, my brain can't even, can't even accept that in my head. You know, it's like, I don't know, that was pretty outrageous. So I, 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 I think that was a leap too far. Frankly, with the angles don't matter. I, I, I think they do. Anyway, sorry, the okay. question, Joe, that you should come out on the show now because. Here we go. Are you ready? You see yeah. in this. Wait, did you take out the part yes. where you said, did you take out the part where you said, I think it's gone too far? I don't know. I do. So, so I have a question. I think it's going to matter. I think they do. Anyway, sorry, the question, Joe, that you should come out on the show now because I modified my glove to learn that trick. You know, that's that uh, spiral that I do. I do that power. I'm doing that. Yeah, so. I actually had a glove on. I don't usually run with gloves. I put a piece of leather inside my hand because my hand, like you said, Ariel, I was practicing this trick like every day, like for two or three hours a day, and my hand was on the grip and on the peg, and that's what I was pressing into the handstand. Yeah. So you can imagine, after three or four times, it was like so. I'm like, I'm putting a thick piece of leather in there, glove on. Not that I was hiding it, but nobody really knew that I had that to, in order to pull that trick off. And I can do it without it, but it's not like I can do it very many times. So I think it's like you said, you always figure out, okay, here's the problem. What can I do to modify it? And it's freestyle. It's like, come on, that's why we're in this sport. Right? Yes, I know it. It really it cracks me up, and. Um, and the funny thing was when I was riding the, the fat PK Ripper Mike Buff, SC Buff, how you say that? Yeah. You know, people are like going, oh my God, how are you moving that bike around? And it, it, it does move. But man, at the end of the day, my shoulders and my, I get, I get migraines. So I was getting headaches from moving that big heavy bike around. So I'm like, man, I think I need to go something lighter. And then I thought, steeper head angle. I mean, that's for, hmm. first thing <laughs> so like, well, steeper head angle would be better, shorter end. And, you know, and that's where it all started. But yeah, I, I, I learned a lot of stuff on that bike, but it was just after a while, it got to my body, you know, not 58. Yeah. So, you know, and, you know, and if you think about it, if we didn't have innovation, guys weren't building hot rods if guys weren't racing cars if harleys weren't being modified i mean you buy a stock harley now it's got what 113 inch motor in it it used to be like 69 inches that so that was kind of an interesting point aftermarket motors are getting huge and so harley kicked it up right yeah. that's you know everybody accepts that well harley does 113 like, inches. That's, that's yeah the I mean. acceptance when it's a brand that does it and it then becomes the next norm um i think well Yes, yes. Like dub, the dub pegs were very weird at first, but now I won't run anything but dub pegs. Right. You know, like, five years ago, 113 inch was insane. So I think it's, it's interesting. I think it's a huge factor. I love innovation. I, I think that a lot of innovation has stopped. From when I first uh, came in, back into this, I was told by a couple of people that, yeah, you don't have to do prototypes anymore. Every dimension possible for a freestyle bike has been done. Okay, who do you think that was? Um, John Bolgens. Who do you think it was? I think it was John Bolgens, and I think it was Brett Downs. You think Brett? Yeah. Now, whether they both told RL, completely different story. Could have just been John, because... <laughs> John's brand manager of Haro. Wendy Osborne is marrying um, whoever is running Haro. Joe, Joe Hawk, yeah. Joe Hawk. So what that means is the guy who runs Haro is going to be in-laws with RL. And John Bolgens then gets to hear, he has to hear all of it. His, his boss. <laughs> right. <laughs> If anyone wanted to bust John's balls, they would they they would have their sister marry into the Haro dynasty. <laughs> you can't go there, Joe. This is this is the long this is RL Osborne's long game. 
you think. And then to take and then to take a haro and to steepen the head tube angle. How much steeper was it? How could you even tell? I, the dude eyeballed it. He wanted it like he wanted it one degree, but I remember, they put it on a jig. I remember Dennis McCoy <laughs> when I was in it wasn't a cop chase, so this is a story that does not include cop chasing. I, I'm gonna just give that little disclaimer because you're gonna think that I'm gonna say the cops were chasing us, but they weren't. Um, but we were down in Huntington Beach and I was I put together a, a new lineage, a horror lineage bike that I rode. And he just took his phone and he just put his phone on my head to check the hang the angle. Oh, uh, have you ever done that? Well, so I'm it? just curious how much, but not a really big point. I'm just curious how much RL thought, you know, I'm guessing it was only a couple of degrees. I use a head tube slacker. It's a spacer you put underneath it, on the bottom side of your head tube. Yeah. About an inch. And that has the effect of uh lessening the the head tube angle and i i yeah making it steeper lessening it making it less steep so i more chopper then uh yeah so it's i am now at 74 and it also gives a little bit of clearance um but actually i wonder if maybe one of the other things i should do is take that off I've been mixing stuff up. I put on new wheels. Anyway, enough. Okay. Let's keep All right. Going. So get back to this. So now our saying. I don't want to prototype anymore. And I'm like, well, nobody's done. I haven't seen that on a 26 inch, you know, and that doesn't suit me. And I, I like the change. In fact, most of the people that I talk to, the community that, I, that we talked with, we talk about that all the time. You know, why are you doing that? Does it work? Is it helping? Yeah, it's helping. No, it's not. You know, it's just, it's just, um, I, don't know. I love innovation. You know? Yeah. So the idea of the community is yeah astounding the community that, I, that we talk with we talk about that all the time so you know, like Doug came out with those pegs with those 80 pegs that have the ball on the end um even if you don't do this what was really interesting is that little puts all of your weight consistently on the same part of the bag and it stabilizes. And I never would have thought of that um, until I tried it. I was like, holy smokes, this goes. Because the bike always it. pushes one way, right? Yeah. I didn't even know that existed. And my son and I were going, hey, how do you keep the bike straight when you're doing bag wheelies? You know, I did, so they cured that. Well, to some extent, now it's, it's, it, um, I would say, like I feel it a lot when I'm doing front wheel tricks. So like if I'm doing um, like hitchhiker uh, with less jugglers. RL is enthralled right now. Yeah. We have sold him. He is so stoked on the tweaking that we're talking about. Because like if you were up doing front wheel stuff and you have maybe you lean in on the inside of the peg, you don't have as much leverage. If you lean on the outside of the peg, you have a little bit more. But during the trick, your feet can wobble all around. Well, even if your feet twist on these piggy pegs, yeah. the little hump basically gets like keeps the majority of your weight in one spot. In right. rest. Yeah. Well, like, and also for me, when I do peg spins, I cut yeah. I mean, I'm really short because I still do that Miami spin. And it's, it's a ball. So instead of drilling into the concrete or the asphalt, yeah. it's around it. Yeah. It solved that problem for me. So I think there's many things that you should check those bags out. If you haven't seen those, all right, we need to we need to send you a pair. Yeah, okay, that's all good because it all goes back to community and innovation, um, which is I think what RL is all about. Like yeah. is coming back in and, and building a big community base. Building a community around it. And also just trying things, like not being not being afraid of trying something new. Or different. Yeah, and have you seen those big pegs? They're like twice the outer diameter. No one remembers the uni pegs. They're like this big. They're huge. Yeah, I'm seeing some that are like maybe. Air uni. Two and a half inches. Okay. Yeah. Oh Thanks. wow. I don't know, but I'm just wondering. Does that having more surface does that help? <clears throat> Not so much. The the thinking with the pegs is the thinner they are, the closer you are to the uh, center of rotation. Okay. Um, and so that's why guys like Dominic Nicoli will run super thin pegs. Um, but the larger pegs. Really, what I hear is guys are just saying it's for foot comfort when they're on the pegs for so long. Oh, right. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay so I have, some, I have some questions. Um, first off, this is asked the, the standard one that we've been throwing out. So what did you do? Ten I'm going to mark this. This is a really good. Um, question. Yeah. Ago and 10 months ago, and what are you going to do in 10 years? Just to throw it out there, like, what did you do 10 months ago? I was searching for that guy online that said angles don't matter. <laughs> and I couldn't, I, I was like, I, was, I had to have my son come down and go, click here, click here. I even credited the guy to see, because I just thought that was ludicrous, man. That angles don't matter, and he's a flatline rider. I'm like, and he's basing this on one guy that can right. ride any bike. Well, what about everybody else? You know what I mean? Yeah. This is going to be an interesting conversation. So that's why okay. So what about 10, 10 months ago? Um, well, we were just getting into this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, but um, is that one short answer? Or no, no, whatever. Yeah, and you guys can ask me whatever you want. Oh, that's great. And, and just another disclaimer. So Joe does all the editing, and he always, always, he's really good. He'll send it off to you before he posts anything, just in case there was something that was said. This is when he gives me carte blanche. That was, you know, was it called? Oh, yeah. Don't have to send anything to me. Just go ahead and put it out there. Right? I think that's the case. Yeah. Right. Just I mean, hopefully somebody will take something wrong and blow up. And it's not, those things last for weeks. Exactly. Yeah. Like, um, okay, so ten months ago, what were you thinking? Ten months ago, what were you doing? You're, you're basically back into things. Well, I think I think it's been my son says it's been roughly a year. Okay, so I didn't I didn't I'll be honest with you guys I didn't return to the sport. I I uh, I used to just criticize Facebook all the time because I saw all these kids on their phone at dinner and I'm like man you know and I just love Facebook and that's so I think you know if I'm gonna criticize it, I should right. so I went on Facebook. So he came back to criticize Facebook. So right. I went on Facebook yeah. and I met all these people right that were that ride and all that stuff and um, man it just it just kind of took me and it went from there and we talked this community we talked about everything you know and. So 10 months ago, I think I was just kind of going, wow, this is great. You know, it's getting to know these guys, you know, that I lived with so much, or we were at the same show or something, you know? Yeah, I just have to chime in on that because I was questioning whether it was really you or I was one of those. And I yeah. had a few of those. Yeah. I called Brian, Brian, I'm like, Brian, did you and RL see each other at a Pink Floyd contest the day or the AP before an AFA contest? And and he said, yes, that actually happened. I said, yeah, but would somebody out there, would someone know that story? Because there's this guy on, on Facebook, says it's RL, and I'm not sure. I even called Ron Wilton. And at the time, Ron Wilton didn't think it was you. He's like, no, it's, a, it's an imposter. Yeah. And I was like, I was reading, I'm like, I think it's RL, I think it's RL. And I was like, pulling in all my resources, whoever I can call to say, is this really RL or not? So it was really interesting how you came back, because you came back, I feel like, so authentic. Like, you had, you had nothing nothing to hide, nothing to prove. Yeah. You just were like there to check it out, like you said, like, hey, what's the story of Facebook? I, I can't be crit critical of it unless I you know, know what it's about. And, you know, what do these people, you know, what makes them tick? And so, and then finally something came out where it was again, it's like, okay, this is our, and I was solving the original question, but. I think we're going to have to put out this whole thing. I mean, there's I know. not going to be a lot that we're going to trim. I think that's what I'm feeling. Like, this is too good because there was such a thing about that, about the whole, you know, whether it was RL or not. And like, I, I, I couldn't tell at first and I was trying to figure it out. And you then, uh, the summer yeah. better, but, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And then, and then later he gets into it. Right. So keep going. You said something, this is the best line. Look, yeah, I can post a picture of me, but that could have been just somebody taking a picture and posted it on, you know, if I'm an imposter. And I love how you went with that. You know, it, that, I gotta tell you, that was the, that was the best time going through all those people questioning me. But I, and I, I, let me break this down. There's a picture in the corner. Yeah, you're getting really like, yeah, hold on, let me just do this. There's a picture in the corner of me, okay? But it's not up in the top. They wanted it up in the top left corner. And I said, so all you people that are doubting, if I move this picture two inches up, you're happy? <laughs> and they're like, oh, God, Joe, no, just move the goddamn picture. Let's get over this. I'm like, no way. I'm gonna ride this as long as I can because that's right. You know? I'm like, no way. I'm going to ride this as long as I can because that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all clapping, like, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> right. Freak. Oh, Freak. It's pretty silly. You guys that's my right. RL moment. And I'll tell you, once I saw him live, that's, it's a show where the whole audience is in with the winner. And uh, so what year, what year was it, RL? Do you remember? I, year? Yeah. Okay, that's it. I don't have a memory anymore. So. so I'm at, it's sold out in the Coliseum. The Coliseum, right? It's like, people everywhere right and and i had a contest the next day but i figured out that if i fly in in the morning i should get there put on my uniform or warm up for five minutes and pros go on so good it's so this is good why he didn't see james mcgraw do the backwards rubber ride because right because he showed up five minutes before the pros he wouldn't even show up in the morning he would show up when end of experts interesting yep. Yeah, yeah, right. And then I knew after the contest, I'd get on a plane and head home, you know. Um, and so I was doing this, and I thought it was pretty smart. Like I was the only one to figure it out. So I'm like, yeah, me and, me and Scott Clark, Scott Clark went to the concert, and we're we're sifting through just piles of people, and I run into this guy, and he looks at me, and I'm like, that's Brian Blender. And he goes, and I'm like, he's looking at me. And we just stopped, and our friends just walked away. And I'm going, 
aren't you supposed to be at a contest tomorrow? And he goes, yeah, I'm flying out in the morning. I go, so am I. I, I thought I was going to figure that out. I mean, sold out at the Coliseum and I read in Brian Blythe. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so he told that story on Facebook when he first came back. And I thought maybe someone else had heard that story, whoever this supposed imposter was. But I don't think Brian... I don't think Brian actually figured it out. He, I don't think Brian did that on a regular basis. I think it just so happened that he flew out late for some other reason. It wasn't like he intentionally set up. Yeah. But here, no, there. That doesn't really matter. I think the story is great. So that's so crazy. And that he figured out he was doing the same thing, flying into your run, jump on the hole. Yeah, right. That's classic. Yeah, it was really good. Okay, so ten years from now, what do you see yourself? What could you imagine yourself doing ten years from now? Maybe sixty-eight. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I can tell you what scares me. I mean, that's not having something to do, like being retired. Yeah. I'm one of those people that if I don't have, like, somewhere I have to be, like, people are going to be pissed at me or something if I don't go, I, I pretty much just kind of fall apart. Mm. You know? I, I'm not one of those people that just sit on the beach and stare at the ocean all day long and just go, man, this is paradise. I just don't get that. Um, so I don't know. Do you uh, piss people off by being late? Like, are you? No, I'm always on time. Oh, me. How do you do that? Do you limit the things that you do? Um, I just, no, I just rush around a lot, literally, hmm. because I mean, I've never been late for any of our shows, neither of you. We have a, yeah. we have a flawless, has there been any time when we booked a show and we've been late? No, no I mean, I'm just out in the garage. Yeah, but still. No, we haven't. You could have decided to go make a sandwich and like, oh, I'll be 10 minutes late. No. So I just, for me, that, that whole thing goes down to when you've made an agreement, and I think it's kind of what RL saying, like if he if he doesn't have someone that he said it would be pissed off if he's not there. But I feel like if you make an agreement that it's really important to keep that agreement. So even if I'm going somewhere and I'm supposed to be there and I'm running like just a couple minutes late, I'll make sure that I message or contact that person before I'm actually late. Cause I would want the same of, of me because if, if you were running late for a show and you said, look, Dave, I'm five minutes behind schedule. I'll get there right at, you know, five past, then I would go do something or I would just know, and I wouldn't just be waiting just out of, you know, being courteous. So that's why you reacted so strongly to the B word last time. To the B word. What B word? You know that 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 B word that rhymes with hurt. Oh, that you you can't say anymore. Right. Oh, <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't say it before, but I didn't know that I had agreed. Right. That. You can't say it now. <laughs> You're saying that that's why I reacted so much because that was an agreement that we had. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. yeah, I guess I'm pretty serious about my agreements. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? No? Absolutely. I think, I think I, I feel the same way. It's like, I don't really buy into the whole retirement. Like, how could, how could I ever see myself retiring? Like, yeah, there's always something that you can, you know, enjoy in life. And so, I, 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 and they call it the golden years, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, people go to the mall and they just walk around the mall because they don't have anything else to do. And I'm like, this, you know, when I go to work, my customers are my friends. We talk, socialize, we work, I get exercise, I get paid, you know, and the whole process. And then I work with this guy, Pat, and we just, we just talk all day long about bikes, guitars, music, whatever. And it's really kind of the highlight of my day, you know? Do we like that part? I think it's, yeah. I think it's, yeah. What do you think? We usually, we do this. Cool. This is 10 minutes ago, Joe, what were you doing? I was apologizing today for the last minute um, confusion in the <laughs> scheduling. <laughs> I'm like, what? Monday is a, is a freer day for me. Usually I would be teaching, like, because I teach two, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I do, I do an after school program with the kids. I do, I bring all, all these bikes out and ramps, and I just have them kind of have a little crash course on freestyle. So, but you do this how many days a week? I do it four days a week now. I do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I also do a Saturday session at different schools. Oh, uh, no, I just do it at Science Works. So I just have, I just promote it through the community. I've been here long enough that I have a pretty good following. I have about 75 students that I like reach out to, and there's usually about 10 to 12 that show up, just depending on the day. That is so I think cool. you well, I, I think you could cut some of that out if you can. I mean, it's good. Okay. Maybe not the, the first part, but just, I don't know. When you talk about how um, renowned you are and how you got. Yeah, I, I, I just, 
I mean, I guess it's good that I said, yeah, like what I what I'm doing, and he and he and RL asks about. Okay. How many years I'm doing it? Let's do different it. schools. Oh uh, no, I just do it at Science Works, so I just have I just promote it through the community. I've been here long enough that I have. There we go. Free to following. I have about seventy five students that I like reach out to, and there's usually about ten to twelve that show up, just depending on the day. That is so cool. Is that your job? So cool. Is that your job? Well, it's not. No, it does. It does have a little bit of a, of a revenue stream, but I, I also have uh, a preschool with my wife, and we also have a, a cannabis training business. Cannabis. Oh, where do we pick back up? I don't know. Because training. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we have a mobile. A mobile. We send the people out, and they go do the training. That's a big industry in this, in this in this area. Good idea. My son got into it from a different point of view. Um, he was teaching like that's what kind of weed he is and stuff. If they had that, you know, product back in the war and helping people and stuff. He did that for a while, but he just he was on the phone all day and got tired of it. But I can relate, man. That's cool. Yeah, it's fine. So it's not my main job. It's one of the ones that uh, I think, I think really cool. you can cut that all out. I think connected. And how can we cut it off to where he asked me, "Is that what you do for a job?" And then I can just say, "Well, it's one of my stream, of, one of my stream of incomes." Okay. All right. Here we go. Free to following. I have about seventy-five students that I like reach out to, and there's usually about ten to twelve that show up, just depending on the day. That is so cool. Is that your job? Well, it's not. No, it does. It does a little bit of a, of a revenue stream, but I, I also have uh, a preschool. I don't know how to cut that out. When you say I also have, that's hysteria. It does, it does have a little bit of a, of a revenue stream, but I, I also have. You just cut it there? I can cut it there. All right. Uh, a preschool with my wife, and we also have a, a cannabis training business. Well, or there, there. That's everyone who knows you. Interesting, but I, I also have uh, a preschool with my wife, and we also have a, a cannabis training business. Cannabis training. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So we have mobile, mobile. How much of this do you want us to go into? I just feel like it's it, it's kind of it's kind of dry and it doesn't it's not really relevant. So, so, right, so they have, it, it does it does have a little bit of a, of a revenue stream, but I, I also have getting the kids involved and, and I have really nice bikes. I get all these little size, 12 inch, 16 inch, 18 inch bikes. So they have a whole yeah, that's that's seems better, don't you think? Sure, we talked about that on a couple shows back. I wanted to learn how to do a band roll. Six years old, he's like, I'm ready for the band roll. So, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty inspiring. It definitely feeds me. I feel like I'm, I'm getting more than just a paycheck, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at some point. The six-year-old band roll is so cool. Yeah, this, this is the one that the sun kept coming in. I, I've got to clean up now. But you well, figure it's not about the money. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so Joe, what about you? Uh, Ten months ago, what were you doing? Ten months ago, I was training with Marty Copa and preparing for EFIS. And I was grinding myself into oblivion to get that uh, footy. I really was grinding myself into oblivion. You were training yourself for what? The EFIS contest. The flatland. flatland contest. Are you a pro flatland runner? Yes, I am. Oh, you really? Oh, wow, man. I got to tell you, man. There you go. You really are. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> oh, you really are. You're a real boy. <laughs> <Don't> you <know? laughs> Are you really? You're perfect. You really are. Okay, but this is all good. I like it all because he's, he goes on to say, um, "Oh, you really are." Good. This, by the way, I think that we are definitely heading towards Seinfeld because we're, we're, we'll talk about anything, but the joke has very little to do with. Actually talking about anyway I can't even yeah. dream what you guys do I watch what you guys are doing now and I'm just like oh, it's, it just blows my mind yeah I call him sick man it's a sick man because he's such a sick writer you mean stiff sick stiff right oh no not stick sick it, it's oh, of, stick sick 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 because yeah, it's sick man but I call him sick man it just freaks me out man you guys spin 360s you know on, on like a front wheel no brakes you know and I'm old school man I even if I don't use my brakes I just got to be there you know right that, that stuff you guys are doing is wow it's impressive when I it's impressive Right, 10 years from now. Okay, 10 years from now. Um, well, I expect to be riding in 10 years from now. I bought a small house uh, between two farm fields that has a six car garage that I ride in. It's 40 by 40. And uh, I got it so that I didn't have to rent at warehouses anymore. And so I will, uh, yeah, I'm going to ride flat until, my, uh, until the wheels fall off. Yeah. Um, it, is that you make a living riding flat? No. Do any of the no. pros? Not many. Well, so some of the pros, so like Alex Jumelin, well, his wife works. Alex has uh, a lot of other endorsements. So kind of like how Tiger Woods, the least amount of his money came from. From golf, Matthias Dendla is like that as well. He's setting up small contracts with brands to do like little six month trip promotions. I don't need to tell people what I know. From golf, Matthias Dendla is like that as well. He's setting up small contracts with brands to do like little six month trip promotions and stuff like that. So there's guys who do that, uh, but from contest winnings, trip promotions and stuff like that. 
So there's guys who do that, uh, but from contest winnings, no, not, not really. And there's not really um, like bike companies, like flatline bike companies that are generating enough to keep a, a team going. Uh, but guys like Terry Adams, they'll, they'll get like 10, 12 sponsors that just sort of contribute you know, a, a little bit. Uh, Terry actually made his money uh, from, I want to say, an, an X Games. He, he won an X Games back in the day and he bought real estate and he's been leveraging uh, that up. So that's how guys you know, afford it. We don't need to tell uh, we don't need to tell Terry's yeah. story about how he makes his money. Yeah, I think it's good though that 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 Arl asked the question and then however we can just um cut it or edit it. But we maybe we can do a voiceover and say that there's certain riders who are making money off of Flat Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's their revenue stream. <laughs> Hey, I have to get going here in just a few minutes, just so you know. Oh, okay. Well, we are. Yeah, out, I just heard this a long time ago. We're 20 minutes in. We're 20 minutes in, and there's 30 minutes to go. Okay. I don't know that you guys want it that way. You don't want big companies coming in, or is that true or not? So uh, part of the, so like we talked to James White, who was in the X Games, and in his view, he hated it because there were cameras in his face. You know, like that scene in Rocky Three when he was. Yeah. But he was trading in the hotel that, that between the cameras and the contest sorry the, the sponsor money that it kind of perverted the whole situation and so there's a lot of backlash it does from that yeah like, i think that the dude think who poured, the dude who poured coke on coca-cola on chad's rims chad's the, rims yeah coke. the guy on the pink bike i think it was the guy the guy on that bike <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you, you know, Dave doing balance tricks and moving all through his bikes and I'm doing my style. How do you say one's better than the other? That is a very difficult. You don't say one's better than the other. Situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I judged the contest recently and I judged with E-Frame Tetlo and E-Frame. Right. That is a very difficult situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, I judged the contest recently and I judged with Ephraim Catlow. And Ephraim is the head judge of Thieves. And so it's great to judge alongside him because he helps you. Um, it's, it, there, are, there are some sort of categories like difficulty, variety, um, consistency, that kind of thing. But when it comes down to you know, two guys who have a perfect run, then it's like, well, did he do all his own tricks or did he do someone else's tricks? And it comes down to. Um, is, this, is this interesting? I think, I think it is, but you know, I feel like it is because I think it talks about a question that's out there a lot. Um, oh, R.L. Osborne is the voice. Of well, and, and what he, then he later remember when he goes with this because he remembers the Dennis McCoy, and then it was like they were tied, and I think it was for the title even. Like the, I, he talks about it, and then the judges said, "Well, gosh, you were original. We just didn't know how to judge you," and so he feels like that his originality kind of came back and bit him. But he thought being original is really important. So I think it's good. I think it leads up into it. I mean, if you want to try to spice it a bit, but I think it's just going to be four four episode kind of thing because we're not cutting much out. You're right. We're basically saying, hey, do we have to cut that as opposed to should we cut it? Like, yeah, I think. Right. Yeah, and wait till you get to the point where he talks about that contest yeah i think it's the finals um should we take a moment here to talk about flatland fuel and how flatland fuel is now sponsoring me again and you can get all of your awesome bike part needs from flatlandfuel.com yeah hey, Richard, so are you bringing yourself something else um and the breadth of techniques that you can bring to the game and, and, and rapid techniques is beyond just front wheel back wheel it could be pivots it could be uh cross foot where you're where you actually cross both ways um that's yeah, so technical, technical stuff you, you yeah. have to be technical like, looking at every little thing and then also think like knowing the riders like oh is that just his standard run? Yeah. Like, flawless Matias did a flawless run but has he been doing that same run for the last few years and, that, uh, and they would judge it based on that so it's not and we had a, we had a show where we had Mark Heaton on and we talked about when the plywood hoods came in the plywood hoods came and like kevin jones did the i don't know if you're there but he did the backwards infinity rollback and then he stood up do you remember that you can do that during our time yeah, during our time. So it was like the late 80s. I don't remember. I mean, I know. I, I know. He wouldn't know because he doesn't show up for AMS. Right. So exactly. 
he was he definitely was at that contest but yeah. okay the impact and i remember seeing stuff that he did i just don't remember that particular but the, but the judging you know couldn't really see it, it was like they, they were just the organization people of afa and like parents they weren't writers and like flatland i think especially in, in all bmx in, in all discipline they have to look at so many different variables and really know the sport anyhow to, to be able to even start to judge it and then there's the whole like what you said rl the artistic it's like okay well yeah nori did a great fun he made the crowd laugh and he did all these crazy balance tricks you know well, that has its own value how can we compare that value to someone that can spend a time machine no handed and, and do all these variations you know it's just the judges came I love how I compare a balance move to a no-handed time machine. Do you know? You like how I just like spam that whole? That's a little, a, it's a little far fetched. So we can test this theory, and we can. <laughs> yeah. So James White, remember what James White said? Uh, he says no. if they're just as hard. It's what's happening today. Oh, right. Because we talked about like take any pro and go out and do an 80s run. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I just maybe factor, maybe factor freestyle can. All right. Well, factor freestyle contest where you, where do, where new school dudes have to do a compulsory old school run. And can they do it like the, what shot for shot with Dorkin one or something along those lines. Right. It would be less effort than trying to get to Montpellier right now for crying out loud. Yeah, how is that? What you're not yeah. going. I'm not going. Uh Terry's going. Matt is Matt's gonna go. It was so funny. Like Alex was talking about how difficult it was for him to go like what five hours and he has to take a train and then a it's ridiculous and then dub was just like heartbroken because yeah i saw the video he did no well, i don't know why canada isn't making dub on team canada he's not they should have i mean Terry and Matt are on Team America. Oh, I have two friends here to introduce you, Joe. Well, you know Ada. Hey, and Ada. This is, and this is Jack. This hey, is how are you? This is my friend, Jax. 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 J A X X. All right, guys. All right. Bye. 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 Cool. Well, yeah, I thought I thought he would be writing for Canada. What do you mean? I mean, he's a Canadian, so why, why wouldn't he be right? I don't know. I, and Canada. So what is he? A U.S. right? I mean, if he did compete, he would be a U.S. writer. I don't. You know, it is possible. There are people in the Olympics that were born in other countries, and then they represent yet a different country. So you can. It's like being sponsored. Um, by you know whatever um huh. i think that happens with team sports but Crazy. yeah like why wouldn't why wouldn't canada take care of dub what did dub do to canada why did dub get kicked off team canada cycling <laughs> i don't know too many trips to china he's the yeah, they suspect that he is the Manchurian candidate. They're they're really really mad at him right now. They're like, look, he speaks Chinese. We know I mean, you. <laughs> I mean, maybe they feel a little, you know uncertain. Okay. Just, <laughs> now, Joe. Now, Joe. This 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 show is not about trying to start rumors here. It sounds like you're start trying to start rumors here. So, I'm trying to pressure test to see if there's anything there. I mean, we don't, you know, maybe there's not anything there or there, okay. there doesn't appear to be anything there. The question is why, Right. Is, why is Canada not- Supporting- why Canada, Yeah, why is Canada not supporting Dub? But also just the perspective of, I'm sure Matt and Terry are just doing their due diligence to get there. They're not getting support from the US to make it happen they're just jumping through the right hoops and and dove's video basically outlined that it was too crazy and not feasible both for economic reasons and and time 
Dub is extremely talented. Terry and Matt have uh, uh, made their own way through. I'm not going to say that Dub is soft. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that Matt and Terry are very, like they have found a way to integrate writing. Well, wait, can I just stop you? Cause you're kind of, you're putting your foot in your mouth. You're kind of, you know, we're gonna have to edit this out. And then just because I said that you're gonna leave it in. So I'm just gonna save you here now, Joe. So you're please gonna don't guilt me into leaving it in. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have to be held accountable for what I say. I got no problem with it. Like it's defensible. Well, honestly. and you're editing RL's version and RL's version, he basically gave you a blanket statement Put anything out there. So anything in post edit, you you just you got to you know you got to live up to it. But I'm going to save you right now. Yeah, we got to get all right. What did what did Terry what did Terry say? Terry called. How many times did how many for how long did Terry Adams call the Ellen show? For years. Did you yeah. hear that story? Well, who told it? It wasn't Chad. It must have been Scott. Was it, right? Scott O'Brien told that story. I don't know. I, I don't know that it came out on the show, but I did hear okay. that. But I, I definitely have heard that. Yeah. And maybe it was on another podcast. Doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is that, yes, Matt and Terry are very proactive and are going to do whatever it takes. And I feel like Dub is also one that will do whatever it takes. And he's kind of met his his match with this whole COVID. It's like, it's put a, it's put him to a place where like, wait, maybe this has just gone too far to be able to pull off. So, uh, Dub is facing, is Dub is facing a challenge right now. We should yeah. be encouraging Dub because it's a very scary challenge. Anything that is actually a challenge will bring, no matter who you are, a challenge will bring you to your knees. It'll shake your constitution. It'll have you uh, second guessing yourself. You'll be filled with doubt. That's yeah. what challenges do. And so- So we should support Dub and we have a week to help him get there. <laughs> we should- Oh, I know some uh, motivational quotes from Rumi that maybe we could tag Dub in. Did you got him on Instagram? I, I, I think I follow Rumi on Instagram. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Okay, so get, get to RL's, RL's punchline. Now he must be part of it. Right. It was, and I had at that runoff with Dennis. The judges told me, the judges came up and go, you know how to score you because you're doing all your own tricks. <laughs> So then I'm like, isn't originality part of the deal? I mean, I don't know. I just kind of, I was like, well, that's kind of the problem, you know, with it. I mean, the competition, it does push you, you know, it causes you to practice it, but it kind of changed your mentality a little bit too. You know, and on racing bikes and motorcycles, the competition makes sense. You know, I mean, it's a, you're, it's a race, you know, but freestyle is uh, not a great race. You know? I, I, I like the analogy that he's talking about racing, you know, BMX and motorcycles. Yeah. It's, it's so clear. Freestyle, it's like art. You know, it's it, and there's been many comparisons, but I, I really liked how he tied it in. And he also didn't seem like he was charged at all about that. I mean, I, I wonder how it was in the, we could have asked him, but I wonder how it was for that in that moment. But he's like, wow, like I thought it was about originality. <laughs> and he kind of just, his hands were tied kind of thing. Well, I'm very glad now that we're judging has advanced so much that you didn't have guys saying, oh, I didn't know how to judge you. Right. I am glad that we have well, uh, dismantled that priesthood. And I think that's where I went. Maybe I, I can't remember if I went to that story where Master of Creativity, I think I did so well because of originality. Well, play it. I think I did say that. And that we actually heard something about that runoff. And I, I'd like to go a little bit off script and ask you about this. So it came to our attention that you did a frame stand bar spin oh yeah and you did it on something other than a giant skyway platform and that was the thing that got you to beat dennis <laughs> wait in the runoff between me and dennis yeah at the velodrome yeah dennis won yeah, dennis, won. dennis and i tied and he won the runoff 
So Matt, I think Matt misremembers this because Matt told us the other way around. I, wanted, I, I think I think it's just a little bit of you know, I think what happened maybe when Dennis when Matt talked about it, I think it was about them competing and then tying. It wasn't about the finals. Uh, right. So they competed okay. and they tied. But I don't know. However, you want to. Oh, leave it in there. and then and then RL did not do Matt's trick in the finals. The finals. That's what's confusing. RL. Well, RL is confused because he's like, "Well, wait, I didn't. I didn't win." Because you're saying Matt said that RL did this trick and beat Dennis, and and now Matt keeps using that. Find that clip. That's what you. That's what you need to do. Is you need to find the clip in the post edit and put that in there so that you can clarify that accuracy. And I think that's what it is. It might have been in the actual run, you know, he RL tied. But then ultimately Dennis did win. All right. I'm pretty sure RL's got it right. Okay, but that's good. Well, if anyone's going to be wrong in the situation, it is most probable that I am the one who's wrong. Yeah. That way, say that again. If anyone, what? If anyone's going to be wrong in this situation, it is most probably me. Okay. If you're comfortable with that. I have to be comfortable. Let me just, okay. So we talked a little bit about what I do for a living. Yeah. Uh, it, it, on a daily basis, all of my colleagues challenge like any anything i say any assertion is up for no holds barred defending and they do that so that we're all right but the hiring process they i don't know that it's like a psychological test but they do test for whether you are able to defend your idea dispassionately or like without getting offended and they wait to see how you behave when you are pinned down and sometimes you're like you're wrong you're like if, if there's if you look down on a table and you see four oranges uh and then someone moves something out of the way and there's five oranges you have to be able to say huh yeah, it's five oranges I didn't see before. Thanks for pointing it out. You have to do that with everything. And sometimes these ideas you are very committed to because you work very hard to find, to, to discover them and assemble them. And, yeah. and, and you have to, yeah, you have to live knowing that you could be wildly wrong. Well, and that's your strongest characteristic, Joe, your humbleness, because you can just go, oh, I get, okay, I got new information. Now I have a different opinion or a different outtake on it. I have, I, I am skilled at apologizing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I really do need to get going probably, but what, where are we at here? 20? Yeah, like the last time we checked was three and a half minutes, minutes ago. <laughs> there's but it's all so good i feel like there's nothing because uh i, I imagine little... that it's all going to be good so here's what i'm just going to do I'm we gonna... do a little bit more because i do want to i do want to that often yeah. that often says that that you beat dennis with the run it might have been in a different contest but he actually brings that up to dennis he's like hey that's sorry i've never been in <laughs> oh look at that this, hey, this yeah, is why we do these things he's he can't question that. i mean he's been through hell and back you know i mean i'm surprised he could remember that i have a hard time um and no disrespect man i'm just man a guy i can't believe he still rides yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, exactly. but um, no, I did um, I did like two boomerangs, but I had one foot on the handlebar, so you could like go like this. Yeah, it's the Xerox machine because everybody's gonna copy it. Right. I read the magazines. Oh, I, <laughs> I never thought of it that way. I don't even remember who named it, but okay, that makes sense. Xerox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. Um, I don't know who renamed it again. It's like, what is the story with this? There's there, somebody in freestyling that's naming all these damn tricks. Is it Blue? Um, is it Spike? Is it Andy Jenkins? Who is it? This is this is the elite living. Uh, yes. What what's the story with, you know, Brian Bythe? Oh yeah, just goofing around. I don't even really call it a trick. It's a tail whip. It's like tail whip is like 
it's an icon trick. It's it's got longevity that's been going on for 40 plus years. And somebody named it. We don't know who that person is. And now here the Xerox machine. I thought for sure he he named it. Didn't you? Like, okay, Xerox machine, because everyone's gonna copy it. Like, did you yeah. see how proud I was when I said it? Yeah, yeah. You're like I was waiting for I him didn't to remember. Get some reward. Like, oh, you're that's so cool that you know that. Exactly. Just dist completely dissed. Oh, Joe. So I there were five been. oranges on the table, though, just so you know. <laughs> but, but my point is that he's, he's also just saying that, um, you know, like he just made up the trick and he didn't really name it. But who is naming all these tricks? How many tricks? Mm -hmm. We need to get to the bottom of that. Like how many tricks were actually named by some editor? So this is, is who, who has that, who has that power now? Well, it's just the viewer. I don't know. Is there well, a power is, vacuum? Is there a power vacuum in Flatland right now? Oh, I see where you're going with this because it's missing. So this used to happen. We should find out if Red Blood actually came up with a name decade or if it was somebody in what you call the liberal media. <laughs> I don't know where you go. <laughs> but, you know, did someone creatively think about just like the Xerox machine, it's, it's along that same creativity. Oh, Fred, I could just hear the conversation now. Oh, Fred. We'll call it the decade because it took you 10 days to, to learn it. But <laughs> okay, keep going because I want to I want to get to that really great part. Okay, so you put there. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I couldn't lose to somebody better than Dennis McCoy. I mean, I got a lot of respect for him, just like I do for you, Dave, with um, your originality, you know. Yep going right around the room to, to most of us. See, I know my place. <laughs> you know, I, I always admire that about you, the fact that you didn't just start copying Kevin Jones. You know, you stuck with your own stuff. And, and I mean, you go to a contest and, and man, you see everybody does the hot trick. It's done a million times, you know, and for me, you know, it's good to see that, but I also like seeing that something totally different like what you did. It, yeah. it shows you a whole nother aspect of the sport, you know? So it's, 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 thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I to tell you a couple things. First off, my style of writing, you know that I was with the beach, it's always about like the performance. And I remember watching you in contests, especially, and you were like so dialed. And I just took that to heart. Like, okay, when show, like sometimes I go riding with buddies and I'm just like goofing around. But when someone's like, okay, it's showtime, it's like days on, and it's like all of a sudden the ground's lava, you don't touch the ground. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. And you just like, you do whatever you can to just be on point, you know? And I think that's, that's game a lot. Of, it's opened a lot of doors for me because, and I teach that to the kids now. I say, okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna do contest. So that means you do your tricks that you can do. It doesn't matter if it's the simplest trick, it doesn't matter what it is, but put together a few tricks and just be on your game because, and then I'll give them an example. I'll do a trick and I'll mess up. And instead of like just tapping my foot, I'll like get off the bike and walk kind of like bummed out. It's like, no, no guys, when you're in show mode, you can, if you touch, you, know, you can get away with it. You just like dab your foot and uh, the audience won't even recognize it. Matthias did, there was a flat Bible post where Matthias did that at Montpellier, it was so funny. So that, that was really inspiring. He dabbed his foot. Yeah, it was like that bar split uh, spin thing, and he just he laid his foot down and kept going and pushed off and went on with it. It was. <laughs> I think it's great. I know it's comical, but it's it's the right thing to do. But the the I, what's funny is that the rules are completely different. It is. It is completely different. Bros, completely yeah. different. Because the way that they judge it, because you could you could do a whole link and then fall off, but then you're still going to get points for a lot of that link that you have built into it. Okay. You see it in the magazines, and that's one thing. It's like, okay, cool. That's RL. And like, like, it's got all these original tricks. But when I watch you specifically in a contest, because I never saw you at a show, I always see you in a contest. And man, it was like, and now that's not even that you flew in that morning and then flew out that day. That's even more props. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, that's so cool. Because I would always like to get there ahead of time, get my bike dialed, like, get a good night's sleep, make sure I have a good breakfast. Like, I couldn't imagine doing it the same day. So, um, the other thing I wanted to mention, it's funny that you mentioned Kevin Jones, because in about, uh, around 1987, 
I was on tour with Aro, and I started to feel that pressure because everyone was starting to do rolling tricks. Everyone was doing all this. And I was doing some, I was doing hang fives and steamrollers, couldn't learn whiplashes, but I wasn't doing the death trucks. I wasn't doing hitchhikers. And uh, Kevin Jones pulled me to the side because there was a show where Skyway was there and Haro. So we did a double double show at this bike shop in Ohio. Pulled me to the side. I don't know. Do you think this is redundant? I mean, I think it's good, but. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll cut it. I sleep, make sure I have a good breakfast. Like, I couldn't imagine doing the same day. So um, I just went into talk. I just talked so much, what I think is more. I don't know. Go ahead. My it, second point. Right. I mean, it's been on the show like two or three times. So yeah. I, yeah. Exactly. And so I was, that I was feeling this way. He said, "Look, I'm not going to just fall subject. I don't want to go down that road. You know, I'll just, my own, you know." So it's interesting. That, okay, I'm not going to just fall subject of you know following the, the trend and, and yeah. stick with my own. You know. So it's interesting that you bring that up. Yeah. It was. Uh, man, it stands out so much in my head. The other part is that why? Why do I want to learn something Kevin Jones has already mastered? I mean, it's like right. Why, I don't even want to go down that road. You know, I'll, I'll just do my own stuff, which, you know, everybody, like, I have things that fit me that I wanted to do. And that's what I wanted to do. I was going to at least do what I wanted to do, you know? Same thing with you. You had your own personal style. And that, Kevin Jones had his own personal style. That's what brings, that's the beautiful thing. If everybody's doing exactly the same thing, you know. Poor Joe. Up there in the corner. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Joe. We need to pull Joe back in. I can't believe I just left you in the dust. I could have said, and Joe, like, Joe's doing the crazy stuff. That's why we call him sick man, because everything he does is, yeah, and like RL, do you ever do you ever see the Joe stuff? No, I haven't seen it. I don't know. Why? Why? Why would I? Did, did anybody publish it? <laughs> did anyone name it? Oh, Joe named did it. Did anyone oh. name it? Did he? Did he have a press agent? Did, oh. did Joe name his own tricks? <laughs> oh no, he's doing it himself. Oh, hey. uh, he's his so own Factor manager. Freestyle. Oh, Factor Freestyle. RL, RL never named any of his tricks. RL never named any of his tricks. I'm just gonna slot it in here because. Yeah, it can go. It can go wherever, and you can. Hey Joe, don't we have some uh, factor freestyles that we can run by our own? I think we got a couple in mind. Yeah, some so in the format that we got. You're not talking very much, Joe. So. <laughs> Oh, see there. There's he's giving you some love. Well, he's, you know, he's saying, hey, Joe, tell us about that uh, that runoff you had with that other top. Oh, you did. Oh, OK. Never, never, never mind. Never mind. Hey, Joe, tell them about that um, original trick that you did that uh, someone else in the magazine. Oh, nobody ever oh, covered no. you in the magazine. No. OK. <laughs> Oh man! But hey, Joe, no, talk about your your that that sponsor you had that kind of oh you oh oh you, you no you only oh, stole banners from Violin Fuel. No. <laughs> oh, that that's cool. It was by choice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we have to work on that. How do we make sure that you don't just sit on the sidelines the whole time? No, it's. I mean, I was a chatterbox there. I, I admit, I was wanting to. Well, I was, I, I was, I was. No, you were digging at me. I get, it. I get. It. It's all good. You, you were digging at me. Keep I going. Was, I, I was saving it for the director's cut. Go ahead. <laughs> so now we got this part. The whole, the whole Joe Johnson director's cut with the. Oh right. You you wrote in the eighties. <laughs> oh, you wrote. Oh, right. You wrote in the 80s. You're from Ohio, right? Ohio. Ohio. I've never, I have that, never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Here we go. Okay. So let that stuff out. All right. So the first one we have up here, is uh, Bob Harrow is an overdriven. This is such a good one. Because oh, <clears throat> his reaction when he talks about it going so deep. The first one we have up here Arrow, is um, Bob Harrow is an overgripper. An overgripper. When Bob Harrow first meets you, he shakes your hand way too hard, excessively firm handshake, way over the top. Is this, is this true? 
I don't remember shaking Bob's hand. Ooh. I never should. Why would I ever shake that? Why would I ever shake his hand? <laughs> I mean, not that I didn't like him. I mean, we definitely had our issues, you know, because we lived together. Um, but um, I don't remember shaking his hand. So here's why we ask. Pete Augustine, you met Bob Harrow? Bob played into him, caught him off guard, and to this day, Pete is pissed and he flexes every time because he's ready to go again. And it happened to Dave, too. Bob Harrow. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to Dave too. You're on fire, Joe. And it happens to Dave too. After a show. And go ahead, Dave. You, 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 it was actually after the contest. So I was telling this story on the first show that we did. And I was like, yeah, when I first came I just finished my contest run. He came out to Lakeside, California to meet me because Ron Wilton was going to do shows with you. That's how I got on hard. You know that? You know oh, that? really? Yeah. Do you remember that's, that? That's a very important part, part right there. Do you remember that, RL, when, when, when Bob Harrow flew out to, uh, to meet me? Uh, did you did you ever hear that? Did you? Bob, uh, did that ever happen to you? No, I. Well, you never shook his hand. He never shook. Bob Hara never shook your hand, and he never uh, flew out to meet you after a contest. Uh, okay. We'll just keep going. Hey, Joe, why aren't you talking? <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop, stop, because the point here is that he didn't you see Arl's reaction? All right, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was I was watching your reaction while I was saying how Bob Arl flew out. All right, all right, all right. And he didn't fly out. Don't start because Ron Milton was going to do shows with you. That's how I got on the You know that? You know oh, that? really? Yeah. So check yeah. this out. I went to Huntington Beach and I entered Bob's class. I knew Ron Milton from San Diego. I used to ride with him a little bit at Mission Beach. And um, he told me, look, I, I can't really say much, but there might be an opportunity for you at Carl. You're so really he, uncomfortable, Joe. You're shrugging your shoulders. I was joined you with BMX Action. Well, so there, it was, I was getting sun coming through, but. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. You're not feeling very comfortable. I'm really sorry. I have to make it up to you somehow. Are you gonna have Bob? You gonna fly Bob out to uh, shake my hand? I'm trying to think who would be the next guest that would be, you know, equivalent to having on the show, like an RL. Oh, like you're talking about? Maybe you could find. Maybe maybe we could find somebody like at my level. To uh... <laughs> no, that you. See, who would that be? Who would that be? That if I surprised you with a guest. Oh. And, and you didn't even know. Oh. And oh. then I just said, hey, this is, you know, you and Joe. I'm just here. I'm oh, just here. Dude, dude there. Oh. If Who we, is it? If we really want a goose. It um, seems like Alex, generally, you, you mentioned his name a few times now. Is Alex someone that you really? I do like Alex. I mean, the first time I ever met him, he tickled me. So they're. I'm fine well, now. Wait a minute. We're talking about Alex Jimlin. Over gripping, but over tickling. Come on. Was it an over tickle? Or was I just, just met the guy and he tickled me. Why? Where is there? There's. You don't even have to over tickle. The tickle is the over. The tickle is the over. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll call Alex, but I'm not going to tell you if I get him on. It'll be a surprise. Okay, continue. I, I, I'll, at some like, point, you'll be able to talk. Contest in Lakeside. And I just finished my run, thank goodness, because he said, hey, nice to meet you. I'm on the bar. And of course, like I know it's Bob Harrow. Took his hand, and he just like crushed it, like grinded my knuckles to the point where I could not. And I was describing this, and Pete's like, you know what? That mother did the same thing to me. And ever since then, I never let my guard down. So we yeah. just been asking people as we go along, and there's been a, a couple other confirmations that they, they have experienced this. And we just kind of, you know, we kind of curious. And, and then we start to think about, hmm, well, is there some connection? Why didn't Bob Harrow ever do a grip? He did everything else. <laughs> This is good. He his mood is his mood goes to eleven during this Bob Harrow stuff. Yeah, because because I'm 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 talking and I'm telling him stories, Joe. Like you can chime in, you can cut me off anytime. In the agreement, we have no time spared. You know, shared. You can just come in and say, "Hey, Dave, uh, that reminds me the time that I was actually met Brian Hoffman." Joe, you can join in and say something interesting anytime you want. <laughs> this is so funny. Okay, just can it all. I, I just cut it all out. Just put. No. Can you just dub? Can you dub your voice over mine? 
So all the stories that you mean I'm like telling, you, you mean like uh, Jay Peterman buying all of Kramer's stories. That's why we put the show together. Is, that's, that's, we think the roots go very deep. I, I love Deepak. I'm all about Deepak. All right. So I never, heard that. I never heard that, but go ahead. Got so, it. Interesting th things like that? We do, we do. And this one actually we were tipped off by Eddie Brock. Hey Joe, this is it. You you got it now. You're in. Are you ready? Come on, you better not blow it. You're tipped off by Eddie Roman. Oh yeah. Okay. And this you may recognize this because we foreshadowed this earlier earlier this week. So is it true or false? Is it factor freestyle that there was an agency that managed Mouthwell? So Yeah, but it was tipped off by Eddie Roman's action. Eddie Roman show because it was um, Scott Scotty Freeman was like, you know, I think RL always had his mouth open, and that's when. Oh, so it wasn't it, it wasn't Eddie. It was Scotty. It wasn't Eddie Roman. It was Scotty. Yes, it's Scott. true. Um, well, you're gonna have to get this right, you know, because you'll get a lot more showtime. If you get things right on factor, because we have to like edit out the mistakes. So exactly, I mean, right, then you'll get airtime. Yeah, that's just kind of how it works, Joe. Oh, yeah. okay. And this, you may recognize this because we foreshadowed this earlier earlier this week. So, is it true or false? Is it factor freestyle that there was an agency that managed mouth models? Mouth models. So well, it was Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. Well, okay. So look at any picture of Pete Augusta. And what's the expression he's got on his face? What? Yeah. Mean mugging. He's like aggro. He's, he's the aggro face. Yeah, he's, aggro face. He is. Uh, I mean, he's not much. I live with that guy for a long time. He's pretty, um, he's just an aggressive mellow at times, uh, but an aggressive writer, you know? Yeah. Eddie Roman would make, would contort his face. Like when someone was doing a trick, he'd be like, he told us about this. And of course, Martin Averio. And so. With a smile, right? I mean, he was a smile. Smiling about it. Protection for the smile. It's everyone around him, except for him. We're just boxing him in. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. Right? I couldn't help it. I got. I couldn't help. I had my tongue out. I know. I just didn't have control of my mouth when I was writing. You know, is that what you're talking about when I'm writing? It, that is involuntary, is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, so there was no contract. There's no agency that was paying you for every photo. You got a, a picture you of you with your mouth. You, you didn't get paid. You didn't ask me for mouth coaching. <laughs> you're asking me if what Eddie Roman is saying is true. Yes. Back to free this, this is screwing me up because I've always looked at Eddie as a pretty straight guy. But I think I'm with you guys a little bit. So this is where you dug yourself a big hole because you said it was Eddie. I don't know how. I, my hands are washed, Joe. Mm. I don't know how you're going to get out of this because it wasn't, it wasn't Eddie. Right. It wasn't Eddie. It wasn't well, Eddie. We just, we now he's what? going out and saying, okay, look, I know Eddie's a straight guy. And I, I heard this too. I remember him thinking, oh, man. What is that is factor freestyle. Okay. All right. That's Play a saving grace. I'll give you that. Levels. Several levels. Your, your your saving grace is that it's factor freestyle. <laughs> Introduce freestyle into into this. Huh? All right. Well, I think he's messing with you. Uh, an agency that does that what? They tell people try to hold their mouth. Well, I guess now that you say it like that, it does sound kind of outlandish. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> that was good. <laughs> now that you say it like that, see. Okay, I did a lot of- Was that you know, worth the wait? Was that worth the wait? It was not only worth the wait, but all of my blabbering on about, oh, Bob, Bob, this and Bob and Bob and flew out and you just killed it on that one line. Okay, so now that you say it like that. <laughs> Which- <laughs> <laughs> oh dude there that got him that got him that was so good okay it's hard to make people laugh jesus christ is it hard to make people laugh uh, that is fucking oh, am i not allowed to cuss on here uh they, they slide it every so often yeah, that's how real people talk yeah, yeah i cuss a lot so i'll, I'll give you that it's, it's all right okay. all right so this so the next one um this is this we got some validation from another eddie uh but this is more like who gets credit for doing something first like <sighs> This, this is, this, this is it. Yeah, this is it. This is your moment right here. See, that's why I was kind of, was kind of giving you time just to sit back and relax. I wasn't trying to take the whole show away because I knew this was a big one for you. We set the, this whole thing up was for this moment right now. Exactly. So you want, go ahead. 
that's this, the next one. Um, this is this act, we got some validation from another Eddie, uh, but this is more like who gets credit for doing something first, like first trip. So like who did the first 900? So it was Dominguez did it on his ramp, Matt did it in context, but Matt will still say that Mike invented it because he conceptualized it first. Yes. And so the way Eddie Fiola broke this down is that as an example that you got the you were credited as the one who invented the backwards rubber ride because you got it in the magazine first. Okay. Even though anybody else had done it. I'm... Even though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what did what did RL say right then? He said he he immediately said, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody else did it. So let's right. let's let's turn it up to, to, to listen. You were credited as the one who invented the backwards rubber right because you got it in the magazine first. Okay. Even though anybody else had done it. I don't know. There might have been some guy in another part of the world doing it. I don't know. I mean, but I did not see anybody else do that. So so in Florida where you debuted it during pro, and we know that you fly in, do your run and go home. Apparently, uh, there was a 12 year old kid named James McGraw who did a, who asserts he put this on 23 mag and he did a backwards rubber ride in his expert run a few hours before you did it in your pro run. But you got it in the magazine first. And so, what, what's the ruling on this one? Um, this is going to be sound a little bit brutal, but who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? So why are we even doing this show? I mean, come on. Like, who the hell cares? Really? Who really cares? <laughs> oh, God. I mean, that's a very good answer. Me to you. I mean, God, these guys are like, hey, this trip, you do this one? I'm like, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I was riding with Chris Day. There's all kinds of stuff coming out of it. And so I, I let, let James have it. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> let James have it. Who cares? Wait, he just signed off on it. He just signed off on it. It's the R. L. Asman. Factor freestyle. R. L. Asman has signed off on. R. L. Transfers title to James. Yeah. So I have hope with the Palacio stance. Then, if that's the case, Dean Dean could relinqu relinquish the rights. He could if he if he if he if he transfers title. These things, these things are moving. Yeah, we need, yeah. We might need to form a, a committee that has the right legalities, you know, to make sure all copyright we, laws and everything are in place. We need, uh, we do need record keepers. That's for certain. We need record keepers. So, so that's, kind of, that's kind of my point, Joe. You keep bringing these up. It's like we don't want the show to always be about who made up what when. Like everybody's kind of had a very similar. Me response. throwing you in the bus again. <laughs> Joe, it's kind of like I'm saying. It's kind of like, hey, Joe, it's kind of like what I've been telling you for months now and reminding you when you divert that the show is not about who did what first. Are you listening to me? Are you, are you even listening? Are you even listening? I have to get that clip. You got to. It's on a video somewhere, right? Yeah, I have it. It's in my, I think it's in my favorites folder. It's okay. So funny. Oh, or it's just in his defense. He's like, okay, I'm a pro writer right now. I really hard on my sport. And when can I claim it? Like he's just trying to get like a yardstick. Like when can I claim it? Is it the first time I post it? Hey, RL, um, he, so, because <laughs> he's pro now. He's pro now. Because he's pro now. And uh, everything's, most, I mean, most everything's been invented. He doesn't. And there's not any, there's not any way to know, like if he's going to, we're going to give, we got to give him a little bit of hope that he can claim a trick. I mean, or else poor guy. I mean, he really did wait too long to really try this. He's pro now. And he wasn't thinking this through. He wasn't, he could have just done it back in the eighties and it would have been a lot easier on it, but he's pro now. Maybe if he was better in the eighties. But uh, you know, on Instagram, and then I say, okay, do this trick. Like, how do we, how do we determine? So let me give you an example. Why is it? Let me, can I just say something? Excuse me. Yes, I'm please. You. I'm hey, Joe, stop. Hey. Now you can stop talking. Now you stop talking, Joe. Joe, I've had enough. Like, can I just say something, please, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> can you just? I liked it better when you were not talking. I'm really hard on my sport. And when can I claim it? Like he's just trying to get like a yardstick. Like when can I claim it? So is it the first time I post it on Instagram? And then I say, okay, do this trick. Like how do we, how do we determine? So let me give you an example. Why is it? Let me, can I just say something? Excuse me. Yes, oh, you got to just play that over and over and over. Can I give you an example? Wait, 
Can I just play the, no. play the clip when he says, "Hey, I don't hear, I don't hear much of you," and then you play the clip of saying, "Can I, can I say something?" And you're like, "Wait, excuse me for interrupting. Just do it in a in a constant loop, <laughs> <laughs> right?" <laughs> hey, we're not hearing much from you. Oh, well, can I just say something? Uh, wait, can, excuse me, can I interrupt? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. Okay, but I do want to hear what you have to say. So, or uh, let's hear what RL said and then. I have no disrespect to you on that. I, I like these questions you're asking me because all the interviews that I've done before, every question is usually the same. Thank you. That's our, that's our, that's, tagline. Tagline. that's our, like, we need to, yeah, that's your tagline for the episode. Best questions. Yeah. So we can we can hold that. It's fact factor freestyle as the best question, best interview questions. What best, did we actually say? Best questions of any podcast. Of any podcast. That's a big title. What with 22 subscri subscribers now. I mean that we might hit 25 by I don't know, in the summer. You gotta call it when it's real. And I mean in those twenty two. It could it could just turn. I'm thinking by fall, 25, maybe 26. I don't want to. Yeah, I, I don't like counting my own chickens. But okay, so let's go. So I, I yeah. like this. You're making me thinking. But I'm just telling you that my honest philosophy on who invented what um, doesn't. It's not a thing with me, you know. And and Mike and me, it's like um Tracy, the guy that did a backflip on a Honda 250, right? The first guy, and he tried it at a motocross race way too high. He landed it and bounced off. And then all these other guys were going, no. You know, four years later, they're doing backflips. They're saying, no, we invented it. No. Uh -huh. That guy had to put his ass over his head and had no idea if he was going to live and showed you that it was possible. That guy, as far as I'm concerned, Tracy, who, that's Pink's husband, right? Pink's husband. Yeah. yeah, that guy deserves a credit because that's just big freaking, freaking balls right there. Yeah. And, and he made it, you know, I mean, come yeah. on. I think yeah. people just trying, some people, it's like everything in the world to, um, they, just, they just grab every little thing that they, they think is going to get them ahead. And, and the truth is, nobody really cares. But I'll tell you what. See, so, but, there, but there's here's no, the you know how you've all, like, you want to name tricks. All these people. Like you, Joe, you understand. Just want to like name, get name stuff. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Uh, but he also got pretty fired up about. It. He's like, "Well, wait, you know." And this guy, hence the oh, point. Oh, right. He just did with the Corey Hart or Tracy yeah, Hart. Exactly. So because yes, Harry Hart. someone else could have been doing another backflip somewhere else. But his point is that other people saw. And like anything, once it's been seen and it's conceptualized, then you're like, oh, that's possible. So I'm going to, you know, extend that and go down the road. And then people like myself just claim it and, you know, write on the coattails of. Maybe I'm doing this all wrong. <clears throat> Maybe there's a trick that, brought, well, there was a trick that Brian Huffman, I, I saw him do. And then, I don't know, it fell into the back of my mind and then I ended up doing it. And it was an awesome, awesome edit. Like awesome edit. Like when I debuted, well, no, it was my, the 2015 Teradome, you know, team year end edit, I had a great part. And Brian goes on to Black Matters and just says, did Joe just steal my inside half packer tire on the ground? And I was oh. like, so that's why I called it a Huff Packer. Yeah, because... I remember it. I remember the name. I didn't know why exactly, but maybe you need to go further back. Again, I'm just saying your pronoun, if you would have been, I'm just saying, go back a little bit further. People think that I made up the ant rider to this day. People think that I made up this double duck. Joe, um, James White, that's your trick, Dave, isn't it? Not my trick, it's Seppi's trick. Maybe we just have to be okay with it. So just go back a few years earlier and just pull up some old tricks that people aren't doing anymore. That's what you need to do, Joe. Uh, it's like a smash and grab on an abandoned, like dudes who are not riding anymore. You just, maybe? It's worth it, it's, it's, it, it's worth a try. Every, everything, I, 
all the other avenues have gotten blocked. So let's talk about that. You talk to any motocross guy, and when Tracy did that backflip, that was freaking mind boggling. Yeah, so Dave, Dave likes to bring this up to me because I'm the odd man out in this one. Um, everyone who asked that question says, who gives a shit? And, and uh, so, so, so here's my conundrum. My conundrum is. All right, so let's, let's see what this young man's conundrum, conundrum is. Uh, okay, so I told you about how I learned how to do no hands <laughs> by pinching my knees. Well, I can also do rebates, and I can do rebates where it comes all the way back around to a no hands um, half fighter. Now. Oh, that, yeah. Just, that, is, that is a massive humble brag, by the way. Oh yeah, you just like throwing around your yeah, I got it. I, I think RL doesn't even understand exactly what that no handed well yeah and certain level. I don't even think that he believes it's possible. He's like, all right, let's see, let's hear. But, it. I, but, like, but I want to have all my boxes checked because I don't want to end up in a situation where I have to create an even more difficult trick like what they had. Oh come on, you know. Wait, okay, well, I get this. You know, here, here's what, you know, you kind of know, if, if you came up with that trick, you kind of know it. You know it in your heart, you know it in your soul. This is where it gets so real though, right? I know, I know, with the whole heart and soul thing. I just- Yeah, but but mm. what were you gonna say? Cause I just cut you off I, and I'm trying not to cut you off Joe, cause you're getting um, a thorn in your saddle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna be a bee in your bonnet. You're gonna have to be in your bonnet. Whatever, but- that's all that you really have to know is that if you know in, in your area, in your heart, whatever, that you did it, that's all that matters. Well, I mean, when I'm- You're kind of dissatisfied though. Here's my point. I think you need to, right in that section, right when you're talking, you need to be clipping all your, you know, you can just do like as many of your crazy original. So when RL is watching it, he'll have an opportunity to wrap his head around it. This is going to be- a real living, you know, experience for him because he he was there. He heard what you said, and now you are just gonna just completely endow him with sickmanness. Oh yeah, and then okay, yeah, right, got um, it. And and, and yes. then and then he comes back to to this, which is great. He comes back to in your hearts of hearts, all that really matters. But you're still feeling a little lost at the end. So, right, because I know I'm thirsty, but I know that I did it. But I still want people to, like I, like I still want to be flown out to an old school bike show, right? Like when next week, when he's there, uh, like I'm going to sit next to him at the autograph booth and get a picture of it. <laughs> And I'm gonna sit in his seat while he's waiting in line for my autograph for a picture. Like this is what <laughs> did we tell did I tell you this that I'm yeah, planning? I, I know I know that he's going and I know it's an old school show. Um is there riding happening? Um no. That's just what's the point? But okay. And he's going out there just to cut frames. I well, they flew him out. They're flying him out and putting him up. And there's an old school, there's like a, a mob ride the, the night before. And I'm just gonna take pictures of all these show bikes. And like, now I can Photoshop on like his Haro head tube onto all of them. And so all these show bikes are gonna be like cut. <laughs> like I'm just going out there so that Todd and I can just like- Is laugh. Todd going? Yeah. Todd lives out there. Where is it? Which town? Dayton. Dayton. All right. Okay. So I got to go, but this is all really good. I think we got 10 minutes. I think. Uh, and I think that might yeah. be at the, at the root of it. But, there, but the, okay, I, there's there's a lot of how you talk, man. Wait a second. Why does it always, why is it only saying 33? Let me run a scenario by you. I know where you get words. You, you explain everything. Like I take a million words. And one little point. You got one word and it explains the whole thing. Oh, so that's oh, why I wasn't talking. I didn't need to. Right. So you need to cut that into the into the loop too. Because he so he says, hey, you're not talking very much. Then it's like, wait, wait, let me interrupt. And then he the full circle comes around. It's like, oh, wait, you use such precise words, you don't have to say a lot. The 
This is so funny. And it's true. I don't think it's like any other RL interview that he's ever done. Right. Right. I mean, it's totally. I mean, this is how his reactions. We've had him. We've had him kind of upset about the backflip, completely laughing, and uh, and just not even caring. Like who cares? A, you know, cussing and then like checking. No way, can I even cuss? Like we've had a pretty range of RL's emotions that we've tapped into, which is uh -huh. ideal. Hey, you know what? We're we are so we are the we have the best questions of any bmx podcast well now let's not get too far ahead of ourselves well RL. i added bmx podcast rl that has to be quoted yeah rl you guys have the best questions you guys have the best yeah. questions that that'll get so, us so it's it's oh, quote God. you have the best questions you guys have the best questions end quote rl osborne Roomy, yes <laughs> okay i gotta go joe but i think i think the rest i don't know what's left but i think it's all just great uh that's good i will trim it up and then uh cut it and i think we've got our rl episode and it's going out next week it's going out next week I'm going to time it for 8 a.m. And then I'm going to go to the bike show where RL is. That's why I'm going. Right. And then he's going to. Who knows? I'll, I'll send it to him. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Good job. Good job to you. I'm so sorry I don't give you enough um, props. I'll, I'll work on that. Oh. And I'll, and, send me a list. Send me a list. I will play that on loop. Yeah, send me a list of your tricks so I can just drop them. Like it's kind of like name dropping. Pack of Like I don't even know all the names of your tricks. I mean, so I did an edit called um, Curriculum Vitae. Yeah. So I have to go find this. I mean, you know, I, you want, I will send it. I will send it to you. If you want, you know, you kind of have to send. Yeah. Okay. It okay. has the names of the tricks. I'll send it to your, to your, uh, to secretary your agent. Thank you. <laughs> I'll send it to assistant. Okay, thank you. Yeah, she'll brief me on it before the next call. <laughs> and then I'll do my best just to do some name dropping. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, Joe. Have a good night. Thanks right. so much. Bye, Dave. Goodbye. Okay,